And do you prep on accident? Or let me ask you this, where do you wanna be in one year of preparedness? Hey, I'm Todd Sepulveda. I am the editor of Prepper Website and the host of the Prepper Website podcast. I think we all believe in preparedness and I believe you believe in preparedness because if you didn't, you more than likely you wouldn't be watching this video right now. But uh, we all wanna make sure that we're moving forward with our preparedness. We don't wanna stay stagnant. We don't wanna go get a couple items and put it in our pantry or in our closets and think that we're good. We wanna make sure that we are getting more prepared each and every day. I mean, that's important. We wanna move from, from where we are in preparedness to the next step, to the next step. So if you're not purposeful though, about your preparedness, if you're not purposeful about how you're doing uh, you know, your, your preparedness and how you're uh, getting there, then you're gonna bounce around from day to day, month to month, you know, days turn into months, months turn into years. And by the time you know it, you've been bouncing around and you might have gathered a little bit of preparedness here, some knowledge here, some skills here, some gear here, but you'll get, just be getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that you won't be getting and moving yourself in big forward movements of where you wanna be in preparedness. And that's what I wanna to talk to you just a little bit uh, tonight about, the, uh, about being prepared and being a little bit more purposeful in our preparedness. And so I wanna talk about that and maybe give you a couple of ideas where to go because we wanna get better prepared. We don't wanna stay where we are. And so here, here's the first thing. I'm gonna talk about three things, right? The first thing is this. Do you have goals? Do you have goals of where you want to be? Because when we come into preparedness, a lot of the times we have that freak out movement. I don't know if you've had that freak out movement. I know that I did. And you get into preparedness and you start bouncing around a little bit and you realize, oh my gosh, this world that we live in is very fragile. And so you, you start almost worrying a little bit. There's a little bit of fear. I mean, if, if we're gonna be very honest, there is some fear that sets in when you realize how fragile our world is. And so you start going and you start panicking. And, and I remember when I first started prepping that I would walk into a grocery store and thank God that I had a list of things that I needed to get because sometimes I went, I was on autopilot. I would go and I was in a daze because I would be thinking about like, oh my gosh, I need that to be prepared. And oh, I could use that to be prepared. And, and I was seeing everything, you know, in the early days and you might've experienced something like that as well. And so if we don't get ourselves out of that mode, or if we don't start to become strategic and purposeful, then we're always going to be just gathering a little bit here and there. So we need to have some goals. So I like to think about it in, in a one year perspective. Where do you want to be in your preparedness in one year? Now, I think our goals need to be very realistic, right? When we say one year, I would even say, you know, food storage is very important. So, but I, I don't even know if I would say, I want to have one year of food storage in one year. I, that's doable. And let me tell you this as well. I think that if you have money, you could throw a lot of money at a lot of this stuff and you would have a lot of things in place. You would be better prepared as far as food and materials and gear and stuff like that. Um, there's still that knowledge aspect of it, but you don't want to just grab a whole bunch of stuff, throw a bunch of money and then put it in a closet and then think you're prepared. That's not the way it goes. But if you're like most of us that don't have a lot of money to throw in preparedness and then just like be instantly prepared, then you need to be purposeful about that. And so uh, you want to be realistic. I don't know if uh, you want to shoot for one year of food storage, let's just say in, in one year that is doable, but I like to be a little bit more realistic. Let's break it down into chunks because I don't know about you, but as I get older, the years start really rolling and I look back and I'm like, man, I've been prepping for a while and wow, you know, just the, the years add up. And so if we chunk that first year into three months, like after one year of preparedness, I want to have three months of food storage. That is very doable. That is very realistic. And so if you can have a goal that like that, I want to have three months worth of food. I want to have so many gallons worth of water. I want to have a, an emergency fund that will allow me to take care of three months worth of expenses. I want to learn a new skill, like an outdoor skill every month. 
those types of things are very doable. They're very realistic, right? You know, like I want to be the, the, you know, a pro bushcrafter uh, after one year. No, that's not, you know, really realistic there. You know, you, could you do it? Yeah. Could you learn a whole lot? Yeah. But let's be realistic, right? What can we do? How can we chunk it so that we can come out at the end of the year and say, man, I met that goal. I, I, I'm better prepared, like way better prepared. And I'm, let me tell you something. If you have three months of food, you are so much better prepared than so many people out there. I mean, you're like probably top 1%, all right? So I'm just, you know, let's just throw it out there. So if you can build on that every single year, man, you would be doing really, really great. So have a goal. It needs to be realistic. And I think it needs to be very specific as well. So I've already kind of talked a little bit about that, but I think you need to, you know, mark it down. Like I want to have three months worth of food and you know, you, you have that down or I want to have so many gallons worth of water stored away or, or the, the ability to do that. You know, so you're, you're getting very specific on that. Second thing that I think you really need to do is you need to have a plan because even though you have goals, you're still, you know, you, it's still kind of pie in the sky type thing is you're throwing it out there and he's like, I have goals, but if you don't have a plan to, to, to work through those goals, they're just going to be goals. So you need to have a plan. And so one thing that I think is very important when you start planning is you write it down. So, you know, you're writing it down. It's like, I, this goal, I want to have three months worth of food storage in, in one year. And you write that down and you, you're able to see that. And it becomes very, very, uh, very real for you. Right. And then as you, uh, as you continue on with this plan, you start to get very specific about it. And so you might say, I'm, I want to start breaking this down. So uh, I'm not going to get three months worth of food storage in my first year or my in my first month, you have 12 months to work at that. So what could you do? Maybe you can add a week of food storage every month, right? Uh, that would get you three months worth of uh, three months worth of food storage, right? And that's very doable. Think about that. One week's you add one week's worth of food storage to your uh, to your pantry to your food storage every 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 month you'll have three months worth of food storage at the end of the year. So be very specific when you know, write it down, be very specific, talk about the amounts, talk about the price. I want to spend $25 or I want to spend a hundred dollars a month on my food storage. Or I want to spend, you know, I have $50 uh, a month to spend on uh, acquiring new skills. So with that $50 a month, I'm going to buy some books. I might buy, uh, a membership to uh, whatever to be able to, uh, you know, see preparedness videos online, you know, whatever it might be, you'd be very specific about the amounts, about the prices. If it's a store, you know, I know that I want to use my local grocery store. And so here's the thing. You want this plan to get to the point where if you couldn't work your plan, so let's just say your spouse is um, is not into preparedness, but you let's just say she'll you become to the point where you're bedridden. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just pulling something out of the air. But let's just say that you couldn't work that plan for that month. You want the plan to be able to hand it over to someone to a, a family member and say, "Will you work this plan for me?" And it's very easy for them. Hey, go to the grocery store and buy five cans of this and three cans of this and, and buy a bag of rice and buy a bag of, of beans and, and come back home and, and put it, you know, in this container and this container. And so you have it laid out so that when you begin to work this plan, you're not having to spend so much energy trying to figure it all out, trying to put it all together and piece it up. You, you have it all together. And it's all there. And so that might be another thing. Maybe you don't give it to someone to actually work, but you give it to them and say, is this plan very clear for you? Could you work my plan? If I didn't get, tell you anything else, if I wasn't with you and spent any more time with you, could you work that plan by yourself and become better prepared? And so that's where you want to be when you start writing it down. And the last thing here is there has to be some accountability. 
And so when I say accountability, I'm, I'm going to talk about it in two, two ways here. The first way when we think about accountability is that there's somebody else in our lives that we're able to bounce off of and say, hey, uh, so did you, maybe we share our plan, right? So maybe you and I uh, are, uh, we're preparedness buddies and uh, I share my plan with you and you share your plan with me. And then so we decide to check in every so often and say, all right, hey, so did you buy your food storage this month or, or this week? Did you go to the grocery store and buy your five cans of green beans or your five cans of whatever? Have you done that? And you're able to hold each other uh, accountable. If the other person says yes, all right, great. If not, like okay, so what do you when are you going to do it? Do you have uh, a plan in place for when you're going to do it? You're going to do it this weekend? Uh, are you going to do it next weekend? So you know, let's check back. So that's the the typical form of accountability when we when we're talking about that uh, to have that in place. And if you can have that in place, that would be great. I know there's a lot of preppers out there that feel like they're completely on their own. And so they're just, they're prepping on their own. So the other accountability is, is that you have yourself, uh, you on your own, you check in with yourself. And so if that is, you set a calendar appointment, if that is, you know, you set off an alarm or an email that comes to you to remind you, maybe you set up a time Saturday morning at eight o'clock in the morning when I wake up after I have my first cup of coffee, I am going to review my plan and I'm going to make sure I'm going to hold myself accountable to make sure that I am working my plan and I've done what I haven't, uh, if, if I've done what I need to do. And if I haven't, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, engage with that plan and get it done. And so I think those three things are very important that you have goals set, that you have a plan written down and put in place. And it's very simple to understand that even if you hand it off to someone that they could, they, they can roll with it. And then you're accountable, whether that's to someone else, if you have it, that's great. That would be optimal. Or if it's just yourself, that you're setting a time where you stop and you reflect and you make sure that you're meeting those goals. And I think that is uh, the way that you, you don't prep on accident, that you don't just like find yourself at the end of one year like, what have I really done? Okay, I've added maybe a couple of number 10 cans of this and I've, I've uh, maybe I bought a new knife or, you know, I, I uh, you know, learned how to, you know, build a fire in this, this one specific way. And so you're kind of hit and missing. We want to guard against that and make sure that we truly are getting prepared, that we are, you know, getting the, the, the knowledge inside of us, that we're getting the skills and that we're buying the gear Really, uh, if we need to have that gear, we're able to get those things and put those things in place. So guys, that is uh, my, uh, my three-step plan to be better prepared in one year. If you're looking for a little bit more information on uh, planning, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and link to an article um, you know, right up here so that you can go and you can go check that out. And I'd love for you to come over and uh, you know give me your thoughts on that. And then also love to hear your thoughts below on what you think about planning. I'd like to know, have you been just hitting and missing and kind of like prepping on accident? Or have you been very strategic about your preparedness and you have a plan that you're working that you want to make sure that you are getting better prepared? And so after a year, after two years, after three years, you are way better prepared than most people could possibly imagine. So I'd love to hear about that in the comments. And so guys, hey, don't forget to come on over to PrepperWebsite.com and check out the podcast at the Prepper website, podcast.com. Love to be able to connect with you in those two places. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, hey, wait a minute. If you, uh, before you leave, if you will like our video and you'll like and subscribe to our page, that would be great if you hit the little uh, red or the little bell and that way you are notified next time that we, uh, we release a video on YouTube. But uh, all right, so with that, thanks so much for watching. God bless. <music>